Hi, I'm Nell. Today we are starting a new ministry called a Minecraft Premier, an introduction to World Generation, or MP for short. In this series, we are going to explain how Minecraft worlds are generated. To do so, we are going to slice it in multiple episodes. First episode will be about biome generation and why acid matters. Second episode will be about 2D parallel noise and how it is used to generate the height maps, allowing to make the relief of the terrain. Third episode will be about how ravine, caves and some structures like Never Fortress and Mineshaft are generated, so it will be mostly about recursion. Fourth episode will be about structure position and lattices, and we will end with chunk population. Of course, if we have more time, we will talk about some other topics, but for now I consider that enough to get you started on understanding how a Minecraft world is truly generated. Yeah, let's roll the intro! Welcome to the first episode, which is about biome generation and linear congruential generator, or LCG for short. So let's start with how we can generate a random world but still be able to regenerate it afterwards. It seems quite obvious, since we are used to program to behave the same way if you do the same action. Let's take for instance your OS. You know it will maybe finish an update, but it will end up on the lagging screen for you to type your password or select your profile, no? But why is that? Well, a computer is deterministic, which means that for a given set of inputs, it will always give, by some program or algorithm, the same output or set of outputs. In fact, engineers worked hard on making sure a computer is deterministic, else we would have some trouble. Let's say 2 plus 2 now equals 5, then you could end up with a lot of money on your bank account, or just nothing. It's unreliable. So, you need it to be deterministic. Let's go back to Minecraft. How come that if you create a new world randomly, then logging, play a little, maybe build a house and log out? So next time you log in, it will know how to give you back your inventory of items, your house and so on. How is that? Well, you are going to respond, eh, easy, it just save everything to a fire. And I will say, yeah, you're right. But no, how can it know how to keep generated the mountain it actually generated when it doesn't have its save in memory? In fact, how can it generate the whole world you are in? I mean, we all know there is potentially an infinite number of worlds in Minecraft, and the game is quite lightweight compared to other AAA they don't know. Well, all worlds are determined from one number, a seed, but seed is a 64-bit number, which means it can reach up to 18 quintillion 446 quadrillion 744 trillion 73 billion 709 million 551,616 on Java edition, but since it's sign, it reached from negative half of that previous number to positive so upper half. So now I can debunk a few white lies and thought. There is not an infinite number of words, only the number we can make out of a 64 bit seed. Also, not everything is safe to a file. In fact, Minecraft world are generated procedurally, which means that there is an algorithm that dictates how to make the world at each step depending on the world seed and also your position in the world. But to make a world, there is more needed than just a seed and an algorithm. You need a way to generate random values to make it look real. I mean, you can't just make all the mountains the same, you know, all the oceans or plains. The answer to that requirement is Pseudo Random Number Generator, or PRNG for short. Like I said, a computer is deterministic, so you can't generate random values like that. You either need special hardware to get it from your environment, like radiation or cosmic particles, or you need a way to make it so it looks like random if you don't look too closely. 
And since not everyone has the hardware, the software solution is the easiest. In Java, our PRNG is a linear congruential generator or LCG, which means that it uses a linear equation, modulus, some number to give a new number. The issue with those generators is that they are cyclic, which means that at some point you will have covered every number of the period of the PRNG and you will end up at the beginning. And since computers are deterministic and we do use the same algorithm, then it will give back the same number as the one at the beginning. To achieve true randomness, we need to avoid at maximum the repetition. So we need a large period for our PRNG. But sadly, Java LCG is quite bad at it. Nonetheless, Minecraft achieved to make world look random thanks to its algorithm. But before talking about how it is implemented in the Minecraft code, I think watching how a LCG works will help you understand how we can make random looking numbers. So here is the next method used by the Java LCG to update the seed and take a value of it, which then can be used to generate different size of number or types like int, long, double, float, boolean, and so on. Voice type are just way to represent number in machine, but it's good to know that they exist. Okay, now let's focus on the updating part of the seed. We recognize our previous equation with a linear part using a multiplier and an indent, modulus the size of the seed, so 48 bytes. This formula has been tested with the dyer test to determine if it is suitable for our PRNG, and it passed most of it. But of course, that doesn't mean it is a perfect one. If you want cryptographically secure number, then you will use a different PRNG in Java. Okay, let's start with 42 as a seed. The LCG outputs 16,159,453 as a result of the next new call, and the seed is internally updated to, to that value, which is 42 times the multiplier plus the addend, and since we are under 48 bits, there is no modulus. So we keep going and you see that the seed is being updated each time, which allows to get a output by taking only a part of it. So let's run it! So far it seems quite random, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite random when you look at small samples, but once we do a lot of calls, we need to worry about possible repetition. Also, if you remember, I said there were 2 to the power of 64 seeds, but the Java LCG only gives 48 bit seeds. Does that mean that for one seed, there is 2 to the power of 16 identical one? Well, not at all. And that's because the biome selection part is done with another LCG in the biome generation code. So let's start with the most interesting part of the world generation, the biome selection. It is crucial to the rest of the process since from it depends the RODF, the cave generation, the structure position, the chunk population, the weather and so on. So now if we look quickly at the output of the biome gen with Admist, we can see for a set seed that some biomes are packed and that's due to condition on the temperature. So we have kind of a, a continuation between biomes. But overall, it looks enough random to be sure to not have the same biomes in front of your eyes every time you go in a Minecraft world. So that's all looking fancy and stuff, but where is the explanation to how biome gen works, Neil? Well, I was gonna come to it before you ask. So biome gen code is only that? Well, not exactly. That's how layers are instantiated. In fact, look at the graph on the right. It's surely more easy to follow. Let's break it down. The first 18 layers are the ASDS one, since they put it in place the continent and the ocean and make the simple biome come to life. I have made a really simple example out of that 1k by 1k area, as you can see. So now we can observe how it is truly generated. First part, we need to create continent and ocean. To do so, we simply put on one tenth of the map some island as plain biomes and the rest will be ocean. You might notice it looks quite big. In fact, it is crucial to maintain a smooth generation on the wall map and also give more randomness to work on while we go down to the 1k by 1k area. This layer is for instance 1 to 4096. Now we can zoom for the first time. A zoom layer allows to reduce the scale but also to mix the randomness we had previously by selecting only some of the elements. 
On that layer that doesn't affect it much since we had only two elements before. Like you saw on the layer 0, we didn't really create continents, it was more like islands. But now we need to create more land. The zoom help a bit, but we still need way more land. So we'll add more plane by creating some ocean on that layer. And we also can create forest with that layer, but it's not used quite now, it will be used later. So we do a quick zoom, then we do three times add island to add more land, and so we are at a scale 1 to 124. Ok, now it is the interesting part. We had enough randomness to create the island, now we need to have them gathered in continent. So we need to move all the excess of ocean. To do so we use a rule quite similar to the one we use in automatas, like the game of life. So we sample a cross shape around the current position, and if it is all ocean and the position is also ocean, then it will be converted with a probability of 1 half to land. Now we can freeze some of the land, so we will say that 1 6 will be mountain, 1 6 will be forest, and the rest will be land. Of course, the ocean is untouched. Now that we added some forest, when we are adding more land with the layer add island, we see way more forest popping up. This layer just convert plain to desert, if there is plain odd forest around, then convert forest to mountain, if there is plain or desert around, and that last layer just spam random numbers into the world. We have two more zoom, then we add more land and forest. Now we try to make a mushroom island. It will not appear here since there was none in the proximity, but it will be like earlier. We sample an area in a diagonal cross this time, and if there is ocean everywhere, then a mushroom island can appear with a chance of 100. For deep ocean, we again do the sampling using the normal cross, and if the positions are all ocean, then it is converted to deep ocean. Ok, now that we reach the end of the first stack, we can already see what kind of big map of the world we will have. But of course, each dot aren't to scale 1 to 1, so we will need to refine it, but it gives an idea of what to expect on a bigger scale. If you have listened to the first part, you notice that the LCG gave quite some good results overall, since it looked quite random. Let's continue with the second stack. I will not do the same thing as depicting every layer, since a lot of them are already known. I will just go over what it looked like in the river branch and how it looked like in the biome one. So river in it just creates some new random value that will be used to generate the rivers, but only on land. Then 6 zoom later on normal size of river, because it can be different if you change the size of your river, we see the river as they will be incorporated in the map. We then call a smooth layer that smoothens all the shape of the river by just selecting between uh, some of the sampling uh, of the position, depending of, uh, of the randomness, of course. After the hills layer, I just mix the randomness from river in it and the first stack with some biome modification and the adding of the biome edge, we add the sunflower planes, then the shore, depending of the biome, and after a few more zoom, we smooth the limit of the biome and we are ready to merge it with the river branch. In the river mix layer, we just mix the river we add and the biome and we make the full map but it's not at scale right now it's at one to four the boronoi zoom is certainly the most interesting layer of all but it's quite complex to be honest uh, it just takes some part of the current map and put it together just by reducing the space so it does uh, like two zoom to make it a uh, one to one, but in fact it does more than that. It select parts and try to stitch them together to make a, a map. So it's 
a zoom, but it improved the quality of the map and also change it completely. Well, not completely, you can reconstruct it, but um, in fact, it, it just um, make it smaller, but more convenient. I think this animation will show you how it looks like. Okay, I think we are done with the second stack and so with the volume generation. Like you saw, it's a quite a resource intensive process. Since to generate by 1k by 1k map, you actually need to generate a way bigger area scale work. You are for sure that each time you take a layer, you increase the area by 2. But that's negligible compared to the amount of layers. For our example, generating the Voronoi map needed at least 45 times a 1 million long arrow so quite a huge number so to wrap it up we learn that uh, LCG and SID is needed to create the world because without it we can't create randomness or just unify uh, one uh, world and also what we learn about biome generation is that it's complex yes but it's quite a smart process and um, it does the job since we have quite random world in general, biome world.